So welcome back to another episode and welcome to my 10 out of 10 arcade game picks. These are my personal choices. There's no official list out there of 10 out of 10 arcade games. These are some games that I played in the arcades back in the day and I fell in love with and I've talked about on the channel over the years. So if you've been with the channel for a while, you may have heard of these games. Uh, what are some games that you guys think are 10 out of 10 arcade games? Let me know down below. And I want to say that most of my picks are from the late 80s uh, into the 90s because that's where I really was playing arcade games. I appreciate Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and all those games. They're fantastic. But these games really meant something to me in the 80s and 90s. I also want to say that Street Fighter is not in this list. It's not because I don't like it. It's because I put it in another 10 out of 10 list before so I've already covered that for sure but today I get to kind of take in that nostalgia and go back to those CD arcades of the 80s and 90s where there was many drug deals and you could get into a fight at any time but it was always so worth it to play the latest in video game technology at that time. Now the first game I'm going to talk about I've talked about many times on the channel but you know what, I always keep coming back to it and I always think about it, uh, of the impact that it had on me when I first saw it, and that is Magician Lord, yes, on the Neo Geo. That game, again, I have to talk about it because at that time, uh, there was a Neo Geo arcade cabinet on my arcade, and I first saw Magician Lord, and I was like, whoa, and I want to get into the detail here, is that what sold me on the game was I went straight up to the cabinet, and I could not believe the detail in the backgrounds, in the pixel art. It was way uh, beyond what was going on with other home consoles and things like that because the Neo Geo was a home console and an arcade machine. Very expensive, it had the price tag to match those innovations. There was just something about your character. You were a magician and you're going through a side view action game. Uh, but the graphics, as they say, were so amazing and you had the ability to change your character and become different characters. So you could turn into like a dragon creature, dragon lord kind of thing, breathing fire. Uh, that was so cool. But you could also change into a ninja and many other different forms. And I just want to say that the game was very challenging when it was on its highest difficulty setting. And when I bought my home console version, me and Rob kept playing the game and it was so difficult and we were wondering the whole time why are we not at the end of this game because we had it on a, a super hard difficulty setting and we didn't realize it we had no idea we just thought the game was default this hard for the home console version and we were punching ourselves in the head afterwards going oh my god we're so stupid and all that but it was something about the music the way it came together it was the beginning of the neo geo days and what a game to hearken that all together and to see in the arcade back then. Magician Lord really stood the test of time and it really was a fun action game with some great bosses, some great enemies. I love the game to death. Now I want to go back to a place called 7-Eleven. Yes, not an arcade, is it? Nope. Well, guess what? There was arcade games in it back then and there was one particular game that stood out to me and my friends and that was Shinobi by Sega. I loved Sega back then, they were on fire. And when I went into that 7-Eleven that day and I saw, you know, a ninja game, everything was about ninjas in the 80s and 90s. Everybody loved ninjas. Ninja movies, you name it, there was ninjas in it. Kids loved it, I loved it. And it's an, again, an action side view game. And we really liked those games back in the 80s and 90s. They, they were what we played all of the time. And this game was extremely challenging as as far as you went into the game, more and more ninjas would show up and you'd get overwhelmed. But, but, if you learn the patterns, you could finish the game on a quarter. And I mentioned him before. I had a friend of mine, Schneel. His name was Neil. He loved Shinobi. We nicknamed him Schneel back then because of this game. Because he could finish the game on one quarter. It was unheard of because he went into the arcade every day and practiced and practiced and practiced and he got good. We had nothing else to do back then. We went to 7-Eleven and we would go and play this goddamn game over and over and over again. And he got really good at it, better than all of us. He, he got his nickname, Schneel. It still sticks to this day. Now to break it up, in the late 80s there, I was reading a comic called Area 88. And I love this. It was about a Japanese fighter pilot that kind of got suckered in to doing all these missions against his will. He was trying to buy his freedom back. 
and I was really into this manga. I thought it was so cool. It was one of the first few mangas that were released in this country, and I just thought it was awesome. I loved the, the drawings of the fighter planes. I loved the character design. It all came together for me. So I went to Bella's Fair with my parents that was across the border for us, and there was this arcade there, and I walked in, and it was like one of those moments, walk in, and right away, you know, usually from a, like an 80s movie, you'd walk in and there, there would be the girl, and there'd be a light shining on her, and there'd be air blowing through her hair. That's, that was UN Squadron. That was UN Squadron. So it was Area 88, an arcade game. But they called it UN Squadron when they brought it over here. Because I guess they thought maybe nobody will know what Area 88 is because it's a Japanese uh, manga, right? So I walk in and I knew exactly what it was. I'm like, oh, it's UN Squadron. And I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, oh my god, it's like, you can use uh, Shin from uh, Area 88. Wait, this is an Area 88 game. And it was very, very exciting for me to play this game. It was a Capcom game. And it's a basic shoot 'em up, a side view shoot 'em up, where you're just going through uh, level after level, destroying enemy planes, wave after wave of them. And people were like, well, that's pretty basic, right? It is, but I think it was the branding of Area 88 that really sold it for me to see an anime, well, a manga that became an anime come into a video game. And those things were very exciting for me back then. And I played the ever loving crap out of that game. And then I got the Super Nintendo game when it came out over here. I played it religiously, and I could never get enough of it, and it, it felt so cool to have that anime experience in a video game. And Capcom was really doing a lot of interesting things like that back then. They got the license for Dungeons and Dragons, which was a big deal, right? It was a big deal back then. And oh my god, what would Capcom do with the branding of Dungeons and Dragons in a side view beat em up? They would create a game where multiple players can play different characters and level up and go through a game and choose your own adventure style through it. So you could pick which direction that you would want to go through in the game. And I was like, oh my god. And I remember seeing the graphics and I'm like, I love the Japanese take on uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. It was perfect. It was a match made in heaven. And I played the ever-loving crap out of that game as well with my friends. We'd always go to the arcades and we were like, oh my god, we gotta play Dungeons and Dragons, the arcade games. And there was a couple released uh, back then and both of them were fantastic and I played them over and over and over again. And you know, it was kind of having a different style experience of Dungeons and Dragons in an arcade way. But wow, that was, that was cool back then. It was like, this is the beginning of video games, right? So now you're like, oh yeah, I can play a thousand Dungeons and Dragons games. Or that's normal. But back then you could do a few. There was some PC games, you know, there was an Atari game, and then there was this game. And I was like, this is the one that I really, really like. And I still, to this day, love those graphics so very much. And it's so great that it got re-released after so many years, a few years back on nearly every single console, so you can go and play it, I think, for really cheap now. Yes, my last Capcom game I'm gonna mention in this list, but what a great one. What a great one. Taking Alien and Predator, two of the biggest franchises back then, and combining them again into a video game experience. Uh, with brand new characters and different takes on different characters, Oh my god, uh, Lin Kurosawa was my character to pick. I loved her, I loved her moveset. I loved that she had a sword with her, killing you know, aliens with swords. It was amazing, it was unreal. And getting the infinite ammo and just blasting aliens, it was very satisfying and seeing their blood splatter everywhere and just seeing all the different kinds of aliens. They really added to the mythos of, of Alien, the franchise. So there'd be so many different versions of aliens in there and it was great, and it also had a very interesting storyline, and I won't get into that because I'm sure you can download this game uh, and play it because that's a problem because of licensing. I don't think they've ever been able to release this uh, properly at home, and that's a crying shame. This game should have gotten a release. Everybody should have a chance to play it, to experience this, and to be able to play as human characters and predators and work together, multiplayer, it was perfect. It was really perfect. And, you know, being on the back of that armored transport, blasting aliens up in the air, unbelievable. And it's one of those games 
that I still look back on as being the perfect mix uh, of, of Alien, Predator, and uh, Capcom coming together and delivering. Now it is no small secret that one of my favorite games on the Neo Geo is Mark of the Wolves, another game that I think deserves a 10 out of 10. And people will be like, why? There's been so many fighting games. Why does this deserve a 10 out of 10? I think it's a swan song to the Neo Geo. I think they hit peak performance with what they could do with this machine. To do with the graphics, to do with the animation, to do with the sound, to do with the music, to do with how the characters had progressed up to this point. We're dealing with a, an older Terry Bogard, uh, you know, looking after Geese Howard's son, Rock. It was cool how the story had continued and all the different characters in there. And it is also a wonderfully playing Neo Geo SNK fighting game. It's perfect. It reminds me of if you would have like Third Strike and Third Strike uh, Street Fighter had such great animation. I felt like they were matching that with Mark of the Wolves because the animation was so good. And it was such a perfect fighting game for me. It's like one of those fighting games I just pick up and I play and I absolutely love. And I gotta say one funny thing about it is back, back in the day, I remember I was playing this game and my mom came to visit one day and she's like in the kitchen or something and she's like, oh my God, why is there so much swearing in that video game? I'm like, there's no swearing in the video game. What are you talking about? She's like, yeah, that, that character's using the F word all the time. I'm like, no, he's not. And then I'm like, Oh my God, Terry Bogard, you know, when he's doing his like wave attack or whatever, it sounds like, you know. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I can hear it. I hear what you're hearing. And I'm like, that's so unintentional and so weird. In fact, even in Alien vs. Predator by Capcom that I just mentioned, they have a similar thing with the main character who looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. When he's moving around, he makes a similar sound. I don't know, it was all unintentional back then. I do believe it was unintentional that these characters were making move, uh, you know, certain movements and it sounded like other things. Swear words in English, I don't know. It's kind of ridiculous. Now for my final arcade game that I think is a, a 10 out of 10 arcade game, to be honest with you, if I, could, if I could make this a 15 out of 10, I would do it. And I think other people would play the game and think, well, it's pretty good, but I don't get why it's a 10 out of 10. It was the arcade experience of seeing this game for the first time and the three cabinets together, the three monitors. It was a very strange experience. You, you walked up to a, a cabinet and you're like, wait, is this three games? You're like, no, it's one arcade game with three monitors going on. And it was on like a super widescreen game. And you're like, what the heck is this? And again, what sold this game was the animation, the backgrounds and the music. What a great storyline. You're like a Terminator ninja who is trying to take down this dictator. You've been programmed to take down this dictator. Your entire experience is going through the entire uh, game, fighting his entire army, and then you get to him and kill him in the end. That's the basics of the story. But I loved it. Back then I was so into Terminator and I, I loved your ninja. So you start off as a ninja and you're just fighting wave after wave of enemies. But if you get hit by any of the enemies, it'll like take off your skin and you'll see the Terminator exoskeleton underneath. And I, I thought that was so awesome. And it was just that the three screens together blew me away. And the high resolution of the monitor back then, I was like, it seemed unbelievable. It seemed like a, a kind of a cartoony experience and I thought, this is incredible. And then obviously I heard the Great Zentata soundtrack going on in the background and I was sold for life. I bought that soundtrack a bunch of different times. I got it on vinyl, which is so ridiculous. And I really loved it. And the great news is it's available on the PlayStation Network. It is in all of its widescreen glory and it's not an expensive game, I really recommend you you know, giving it a shot because it's a lot of fun and you can play two players. So you can have two ninjas and you know what, you got unlimited continues. I finished it with my wife, I finished it with Rob. It's been 
a heck of an experience and I keep going back and playing the game. Every time I put on my PlayStation 5, it's still, you know, it's, it's there and I turn that on. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll waste five minutes and just play this game and relive those glory arcade days. And wasn't the arcade an amazing place? It really was. There was so many machines in there. It was all that amazing, the electric glow that was going on. And it was exciting to walk in and see a new game and have an experience and go, this is unreal. This is unreal. I remember the first time seeing Final Fight. That's another game I listed as a, a 10 out of 10 game for sure. Like these experiences have been so amazing over the years. And it's really sad that the arcade days are over. And that's why I want to come in and honor them a little bit today with a bit of nostalgia for sure. So guys, what are some of your favorite arcade games from the, the yesteryears for sure. So anyways, guys, until next time.